so we're going to talk about an application of um, uh, neural networks to uh, loss reserving in, uh, in insurance. So let's talk about what happens um, when uh, the throughout the life of, of an insurance claim. So the, the insurance company or, or the insurer um, first finds out about an accident when uh, the claim is reported. And uh, when, when, when the claim is first reported, uh, the, the claims adjuster uh, will set aside uh, some, uh, I guess like uh, uh, input some number in, into the claims management system, which is like the, the expected amount um, that they're, they're going to pay out over the life of that claim. And uh, for, for simple cases, um, the, 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 the lag uh, between the, uh, the accident occurring and then the, the claim being reported is, is quite short. So, so if you're driving um, home from work and then you get into a minor co collision, um, you typically uh, report that right away. So, so then um, after the, the, the claims reported, uh, payments will be made uh, for the damages and then um, you'll sort of just uh, move on. Um, in, in specific lines of businesses, um, the, uh, the, there's more uncertainty um, around uh, when the, the, the claim is going to be reported. So um, in, in, in workers' compensation, um, it's what we call a, a long tail uh, line of business. There can be a, a lag um, after the accident occurs um, for the claim to be reported and then um, the, the, the whole process of, of uh, getting paid um, can, uh, can take a while. So, so the the reserving uh, problem uh, facing actuaries is, is basically trying to figure out um, how much money um, the insurance company has to uh, uh, set aside in, in order to uh, pay for their uh, liabilities. And these include uh, claims that have already been reported and then also um, accidents that have occurred um, but have not yet been uh, reported. So we're going to take a look at um, a, a shiny application that someone has built um, just, just to see what sort of data um, the, uh, the actual receives um, when they're analyzing um, uh, the claims. So, so here, uh, what we have what we call a loss triangle. So down the rows, we have accident years. Um, and then across the top, we have um, development periods. So let's take an example. Let's look at this um, 1987 um, accident year. Uh, and then I guess we can uh, display some more numbers. So this uh, 557, this, this corresponds to the amount that was paid um, in 1987 for all the accidents that, that occurred in um, 1987. And then if we move over uh, to, to the second development period, this would be the cumulative amount uh, that, that's paid as of um, year end of the, the second year after 1987. So th this will be calendar year um, 1988. So, so if you think about it, if we're standing at the end of 1990, um, we, we, we have uh, basically um, this diagonal here, which is um, um, all the uh, paid amounts we have as um, of the end of um, 1990. And so, so of course, we, we can't see into the future, so, so that's why these are all missing. And then the, the, the idea is then to you know, try to fill in the, the bottom half of this triangle so we can um, add up the, uh, the, the ultimate amounts to uh, calculate our loss reserves. So for the past um, uh, 40 years or so, the, 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 the industry has sort of like um, uh, focused on, on one method to uh, do this type of analysis and then that's called um, either the, the, the chain ladder or the, the development method depending on where you are. So, so the idea here is um, we calculate these things called age to age factors. So let's take an example. Um, going back to 1987, this uh, 7.2 here is going to be calculated by dividing um, the, the cumulative, um, cumulative uh, paid, uh, the uh, second development period divided by uh, the, the first. And then so, so the idea is that we calculate all of these patterns and then we make the assumptions that, that, that for all the accident years, um, the relationship between um, the, the development periods are, are going to be the same. And then the actuary will use um, his or her, uh, I guess, professional judgment to, to look at these patterns and then pick out um, the, uh, the, the, the factors. And then once we have these um, age to age factors, we can, of course, um, you know, multiply the 
the, the numbers on the triangle to sort of fill in um, this square. And then we end up with the, uh, the ultimate uh, amounts. So, so, so that's basically what um, everyone is using today. So then we're, we're thinking about, okay, how can we um, perhaps apply some machine learning techniques to, to this problem to help um, speed up the process. So, so here um, we're going to talk about how to frame this uh, uh, problem as, as a predictive modeling problem. So, so here we have a, a triangle, and then if you think about it, if we um, sort of uh, gather that triangle or, or look at that triangle in a long format, we can um, then come up with some predictors for, for each um, row here. And then each row in the, in the modeling data set corresponds to a cell in, in our um, uh, runoff triangle. So, so once we come up with the predictors, we can do something like this and then run a regression um, uh, for the incremental pay loss, which are the cells of the triangle against um, the predictors. So uh, we're going to use some publicly available uh, data that um, are from the uh, financial statements of um, insurance companies. And then we can talk about what uh, our response and predictor variables are in our model. So, so the response is going to be the, the incremental pay loss and then uh, the, the claims outstanding, which was the, the case reserves that, that we talked about is the sort of the initial estimates um, of, uh, of the claim. And um, the, the, the takeaway here, if, um, even if you're not in insurance, is that in, in neural networks, we can have uh, multiple response variables in the same model. And for the predictors, we're going to use uh, the time series of uh, pay losses and then case reserves. So, so, so what, what, do we, what do we mean by that? Um, so taking uh, one accident year as an example, if we think about um, looking at the first column, that there's really no numbers to, to the left of it because we, we don't have any history. But as we move along the, the de development uh, periods, we start um, to have some sort of a history. So, so, so coming back here, we see that, uh, for example, in this uh, 1987, uh, in order to predict uh, this number, right, this 10,000 10, number, we can uh, take advantage of the, uh, the, the prior um, development experience. So, so basically, uh, we, we, we can use the time series of uh, pay losses and case reserves. And then we are also going to use the company code um, that, that's in the modeling data set uh, as one of the predictors. So, so as opposed to, to the traditional um, uh, techniques, we, we are using data from a bunch of different companies um, simultaneously. So we, we need that as a predictor to differentiate the experience. So, so the company codes are going to be um, indexed as integers. Um, basically, uh, if you have 50 companies, then they're going to be indexed from 0 to 49. So now that we've gone through the response and predictors, we can talk about um, the neural network itself. So, so you know, this, this looks kind of fancy, but you can think of each of these boxes as just some sort of uh, transformation. And, and then the, the, the takeaway here really is that you can um, input heterogeneous data into a neural net. You can have here we have some time series data and then we have um, a, a categorical variable. And then um, we can also have multiple outputs um, and then sort of uh, optimize our um, network um, simultaneously. So for, for the categorical variables, um, we, we, we use an embedding layer. So, so, so this idea is that we choose um, uh, a, uh, basically, we, we, we want to map each uh, company into um, some space, some, some embedding space. So if um, in, in this example here, we're picking five as our, um, the, the length of, of our uh, vector, then um, each company is uh, getting mapped to a point in R5. And then the, the, the cool thing here is that uh, the, uh, the, the actual values of these um, vectors are going to be determined uh, or, or learned uh, through the, uh, the, the training process. So, so we're not um, you know, specifying beforehand um, what these uh, values are. And then um, we, we also have some uh, recurrent uh, units that, that we're going to use to um, take care of the, 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 the time series data that's being fed into the network. And um, we don't have too much time to go, go through that, but um, ba basically uh, we're taking advantage of 
the, the developments in um, uh, things like machine translation, um, where they're, they're building um, these uh, architecture to handle um, sequential data. So, so since we have a time series, we can use um, the, the, the same type of technology here. So uh, again, um, putting it all together, we're just um, you know, putting these uh, inputs into a bunch of different transformations and then um, eventually we'll get some outputs. And, and then the, uh, the, the, the neural network is able to sort of um, uh, learn from um, this data to, to come up with the, uh, the, the best ways to parameterize um, itself. So, so this was implemented um, using R and, and the Keras package. And then um, basically this network here, you can implement it um, under 30 lines of code. So uh, like, like, like many other uh, machine learning problems, um, a lot of this uh, work was in the, uh, in the data preparation. So here are some results. Uh, this is um, some, some out of time uh, testing results. So the, uh, the top part is the, the cumulative um, loss ratio. So this will be the cumulative losses divided by the, uh, the earned premium for, uh, for each accent year. So the, the black dots are the actual values that have been observed. Um, the, the circles um, are the, uh, the, the holdout. Uh, values and then the, the the red crosses are the predictions, and then in, in the bottom here these are um, the, the 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 case reserves um, for the, the the same accident years. So so here are different um, couple of different lines of business that that, that we looked at. Um, so this was a commercial auto and this is workers and co workers compensation, which has um, slightly different patterns, and then we see that the model was able to capture those patterns. And in order to benchmark against existing methods, uh, we're using, um, we're, we're defining a couple metrics. So, so one is the root mean uh, uh, square percentage error, and then the other one is the mean absolute percentage error. And then what we're doing is we're taking the ultimate losses, um, uh, calculating the, the, the error on those, and then averaging it over um, uh, each line of business. So here is uh, the, the results of the, uh, of, the, of the study. And then um, Mac here is uh, just um, the, the, the trend ladder method, basically. Um, and then we have some uh, over dispersed Poisson uh, method. And then, and then we also included some newer uh, Bayesian um, MCMC models. So we see that um, it's sort of able to um, uh, stand up to some of the uh, existing techniques. So the, the takeaway here is that um, the, you know, neural nets are not too bad at doing some of the basic uh, reserving work that actuaries are, are doing today. Um, but, but here, we, we're really working with um, uh, some very aggregated and, and uh, small data sets. So in, in the future, we, we hope to um, uh, you know, uh, apply these techniques to claims level data or even policy level data so we can um, work on reserving and pricing um, simultane uh, simultaneously and uh, have a holistic approach um, to do that. And also um, interpretability, um, you, if you've been to some of the other talks, that, that's a hot topic right now and the insurance is a, a, a pretty regulated industry. So um, there's, there's uh, quite a bit of um, uh, research around how, how do we explain some of these uh, models to the regulators so they, you know, they, they, they feel comfortable with it. So um, the, the, the slides are uh, available online and then you can also check out uh, the, the paper which is um, currently under review on um, archive. <laughs> All right, so I <laughs> spoke really fast. We have time for yeah. any questions? Yes. Uh, over there, that gentleman. Okay, so, so there's a question around how do we um, quantify the, the variability in, in the reserves? Yeah. 
Okay, so so um, so so there's currently a, a, a lot of research around like using um, Be uh, Bayesian um, uh, deep learning frameworks. So then, um, if you think about some of the the, the, the current research around um, you know uh, Bayesian MCMC models or like the stochastic re reserving literature, um, th there's some things that 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 you, that you can do in neural nets to to come up with that, um, and then. Right, right. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so then um, this approach is like we're we're not starting out with the uh, you know the the stochastic processes that that sort of generate um, the, the, these values. We're sort of going um, from the other way, right? So, so then um, the, the the idea here then is to um, sort of uh, try to come up with um, sources of randomness so we can um, uh, get at a distribution. And then this distribution is not justified um, mathematically like, like it is from um, you know, the stochastic reserving literature. But then once we come up with those um, distributions, you know, either using, um, like, uh, using dropout in, in neural nets uh, or just running the neural net um, multiple times because the ways are uh, randomly initial, initialized, once we have those um, distributions, we can backtest those distributions against um, the, the, the past uh, experience. So, so, um, so, so that, that may be able to um, con convince some folks, right? Because if you use the, uh, the stochastic uh, reserving techniques and then um, you, you back test the, the, the credibility intervals or prediction intervals, and then they don't do as well, um, have, you know, a, a say, for example, a, a neural network approach, then, then that's one way you can sort of um, get buy-in. Um, in, in this framework, uh, you, you oh, oh, sorry about that. Okay, so 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 the so the question was um, in our uh, model, we, we used uh, company code as one of the predictors. So so for example, we have 50. Um, then then what if we have um, the, the the 50 first, right? Um, that that's unseen before. So so in this framework, you you wouldn't um, be able to do that. But but then um, the in in like uh, practically, if you are a um, insurance company, you might have a portfolio of um, a, a bunch of different companies, and then um, in, in that case, you you you, you wouldn't um, run into the problem of um, you know coming up with a a company that you haven't seen before. Got it. So, so the question is, um, have we seen any applications of, of um, these types of techniques in, in reinsurance? Uh, and I, I have not, but if you have ideas, we can you know, definitely connect and, and chat about them. Uh, I, I have not um, because the, 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 the oh yes yeah so 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 the question was um, there there's been a, a trend towards using um, higher frequency data so so in, in this study we look at um, yearly data and then what about quarterly and and, and monthly um, so so I I have not because um, most of the the, the the publicly available data you can get is um, yearly but um, it, it should just work on also. Um, um, monthly and quarterly data, because all you're doing is um, sort of uh, changing the, uh, the the time steps of your time series. So, so this should apply. Awesome, everyone. Thank you. Kevin. Thank you.